This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is a show where we talk to people in and around professional wrestling, indie wrestling, independent professional wrestling. That's the proper term. Uh, you can check out everything and please uh, support uh, a lot of these guys that are on the show over at IndieWrestling.us or a lot of the other shows over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com to get all of your wrestling podcast video show fix over there. Get all the links and subscribe to specifically the Indie Mayhem Show, or look for the WMS Super Feed. Please, uh, also, please rate and like and whatever the function is on wherever you're uh, watching or listening to this show. Uh, that helps us get in front of more people. And please share the show if you like the conversations we're having here. And uh, drop us a line, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Uh, and you can uh, let us know any questions for any announce guests that we have coming up or even uh, anybody you think we should be talking to on the show. Uh, we're definitely open to suggestions. We definitely have brought people on the show because of recommendations, whether if you uh, you tell me at a show, uh, if I run into you or you tell me on social media, tweeting me, uh, whatever the case, we're definitely open because you definitely want to keep this, you know, not just like everybody in the Pittsburgh and greater tri-state area where we're trying to get everybody all across the country here. And we've had a lot of luck with that lately. And thank you everybody for being a part of that. Uh, so we got a, we got a fun one here today. These guys, um, it, it's a, it's a tag team and their manager actually from uh, black diamond wrestling. Um, they now go by MT OSHA. We're going to get into that name. It's a mashup, but we got to get into the history of that as well. But we have them with us. Uh, we have, first of all, he's the manager extraordinaire. He is, nope, there's the wrong title. There he is. Ronnie Starks is with us. Yeah, manager of extraordinaire. That's the nicest thing anybody said to me. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Probably. <Including from> us. <laughs> Probably. There you go. No violations for you today. There you go. Also with us, Dan Sandwich, who, if you're a longtime listener of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we actually kind of have a a running gag history with him <laughs> that he didn't know about <laughs> that we uh, chatted about today. How are you doing today, sir? Doing pretty good, brother. How about you? Awesome. Awesome. And then also with us to round out the tag team is Destin Vane. I'll be the one that stays out of trouble tonight. Okay. And you're also the better dressed of the crew tonight. Yeah. Uh, overdressed or are they underdressed? I, I, don't I, I don't know. What, <laughs> what is the bar here, right? I'm wearing a T-shirt. I'm wearing a Mega Man T-shirt myself. Uh, you know, I, everybody's been stepping up ever since uh, the main event won the uh, I, I want to win the award. You want the award? Yeah, it's the lookout main event. <laughs> Destin's coming for you. <laughs> uh, brave the tireless uh, look as well. Yes. So, awesome. Well, we like to do a little bit of an icebreaker for people maybe not familiar with you before we get into your life story here. Uh and we'll kind of just go across the board. What is your uh, earliest memory of professional wrestling? Whoever wants to go first. Well, my earliest memory is actually seeing a commercial featuring Yokozuna. When I saw that guy, I had to watch. I actually have the VHS tape of the very first wrestling show I've ever watched. Really? Main event, Yokozuna, Owen Hart, and Hakushi against Bret Hart, 1-2-3 Kid, and Bob Spark Plug Holly. <laughs> that is a main event. What is that this? was a main event. What is the tape? And to think that that got me hooked. <laughs> what is the tape? Is it like one of those Battle of the Superstars or no, something? No, it was just a Monday Night Raw. I was like, I'll record oh. it in case I miss anything. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. That makes sense now. <laughs> so I'm just like, that's not a that's not a King of the Ring or anything of that era. That I was the type of fan that recorded. I recorded everything that was on <clears throat> wrestling, mm -hmm. web, WCW, WWF. I recorded it also. Unfortunately, a lot of those tapes are lost, but uh, well, we got the network now. We got so. the network now. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely, when the network happened, all my pay-per-view tapes, I'm, I gave them to my friend that still had a VCR. I'm like, here, your own WWE network. Uh, that's awesome. So Yokozuna was what got you into Yokozuna it. Yokozuna was it's, what got me in. That's who you I'm aspire not. to be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie's beating you to it. Dan Sandwich. Dan Sandwich, what's your earliest memory of uh, pro wrestling? Uh, mine's easy. Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, WrestleMania 10. Nice ladder match. Yep. Got yeah. me in. Hooked me. 
Nice. Were you like aware of it going into it or just like at a party and happened to see it or? No, nah, hanging out with friends down at the park and shooting basketball. Uh, when a couple of guys who were up to no good started showed, showed talking your, trash in my neighborhood. And showed you a wrestling tape. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, nah, I just heard them talking about Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon. I'm like, who the hell are these guys? I, mm-hmm. uh, what, WrestleMania 10, what year? Come on, Sorg. Uh, 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 yeah, it has to be like 94-ish, 94, right? 94, 94. Was it 94? I, I would have. Yokozuna was 95. Mm-hmm. April 95. So that was, and it was like the day after WrestleMania 11. Cause I right. So I would have been eight years old. I didn't know nothing about wrestling. So hearing that kind of got me hooked. I started watching it. And uh, I mean, hell, to, to pick up on wrestling on those two guys, mm-hmm. couldn't really pick up on any two better guys, really. Yeah, it's kind of a higher bar there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's definitely the, the, the workhorse era, right? Right. Uh, with, with those guys. That's awesome. Uh, what about you, Ronnie? Uh, I turned on Monday Night Raw, and I saw Diesel turn on Shawn Michaels. And that's the first time I watched wrestling, and then it just kind of went from there. You guys are relatively the same era. This is interesting. Yep. It, it yeah. is weird. I, mean, I, I don't think we age. ever knew each other's story either. No? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the bonding experience for this tag team right here, for this faction here. We're more into those uh, rules and violations. Where yeah, exactly. What's wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so you guys watched that, obviously, you know, got into it, became fans. Like, what, what was the point where you guys... Uh, individually um, decided this is the thing I want to get into in a certain in, in some one shape or form. Are we all going to have the same answer? Yeah. Uh, Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> when we decided to get into it, yeah, yeah. From being a fan to say I want to get in there and do this. Uh, two thousand four. Mm-hmm. No, two thousand three. Um. Me and Destin were backyarding at the time, and we we figured out a you place can't to say go. That word. <laughs> we, we were backyarding. front porching. Alternative indie wrestling. <laughs> Alternative of backyarding. Hey, some places uh, are. We might so, have been better. <laughs> no, once once I figured out that there were actually uh, you know schools to get into and and do mm-hmm. it other than down at the park. And and to be fair, that's an era where the backyard wrestling tapes and video game were around. So I mean, yeah. that, that was yeah. pretty prominent. Yeah, at backyard the time. wrestling yeah. was hot in the early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Late 90s. Mm-hmm. It was almost the cool thing to do in like the I was only like a freshman in high school, but it was almost like it was popular enough where it was almost like a sport, I guess, where like you had all kinds of people from my school joining in on the fun. <laughs> Mm. And we never like used barbed wire or anything crazy like that. We just threw each other around. So we dangerous, were very but watered not, down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a difference for sure. <laughs> like the guys that had the trampoline, or the guys that just had like. Well, I mean, when you typically think of backyard wrestling, you're thinking of like these guys who are like, I guess between like 18 and 25. Well, when we were doing it, we were 15. Mm-hmm. Thanks. So, like, we weren't hitting each other with glass and barbed wire and shit. We, we were, were training by the time we were 16, so it was 15, 14. Yeah. So, did, did they, you know, usually I hear about when people have, you know, trained the wrong way or, or, or done something like that. There's a lot of, like, you know, things you have to break after doing it for a while. Was it hard to kind of transition to that that era, like, to, from what you were already doing in the backyard to learn? For the me, right it way? wasn't because I didn't, I never took it that seriously. Like, I never, like, backyard wrestling, I knew, like, I knew my place. I knew. Uh, I knew at the time that there was training. I yeah. knew I was going to be training. I actually the. I didn't even know there was training in Pittsburgh. Of all people who I found out from, was uh, my first indie wrestling show, and I approached two guys who I just thought were local guys who ended up turning out to be CM Punk and Chris Hero. Oh, just, <laughs> just oh, you know, you're. Who they ever beat? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I started talking about them and. Uh, both were like very encouraging and I was like maybe 80 pounds, not a little more than that, but <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I was your scrawny kid and, uh, Chris Hero was giving me the website for PWX. You're to still scrawny. Take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that out there. I'm off the juice. <laughs> yep. That was back in the day when you were back yeah, in the day when you looked like Brian Cage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. The, uh, but, uh, after that I found the website. I don't really remember what transition to it. We actually uh, were doing with Jason Cage and a couple others who ended up training with us. So we had like a whole crew of guys that like ended up. Sean uh, Resnick. Yeah, Sean Resnick was one. I've heard that name Uh, before. He he, he was Sean Dahmer originally. And actually, uh, Chris Helmsley. 
he he didn't end up training but he he was in there for a little bit like we we weren't really a well-known group but like there there's a few people who are in a local area now who actually were a part of what we did mm -hmm. and uh it's pretty interesting we we always joke around saying we need that big six man tag eight man tag or whatever it would be who else can day. we out as a backyard wrestler <laughs> Uh, it's like taboo. Nobody talks about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. everyone did it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then, like you said, it was in that era where it was like the thing to do almost. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you weren't of age to train or you didn't know what training was, it wasn't really necessarily uncommon or taboo back then. Now mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Uh, other than just kind of a fun activity. Besides uh, everybody, <laughs> can be a professional wrestler nowadays mm -hmm. anyway so mm -hmm. that is true the bar has been lowered but you know but you know hopefully everybody has like a little bit of training right oh yeah i mean and it, it was hopefully I, th hopefully I think yeah dan and i actually a lot of people always say like our class was like one of the last classes to really uh, i'm not putting any other classes down but it was it was one of those last classes to really be like get that old school we're in that sportatorium where freezing cold nights mm -hmm. smoking hot summers and and i th i think i don't put down any training now a lot of people say like uh the, they got it easy now if, if, you, if you're if you're getting in that ring you, you don't have it easy yeah. whether you're doing blow up drills or not you're beating yourself up and mm -hmm. I, th I don't think you should be taking that away from anybody awesome what about you ronnie um i came from you ever hear the cwf i've heard of the CWF. Bill Hughes and all yeah them. bill hughes yeah i was trained by Hill, bill bill yeah. Bill Hughes, Beast, uh. and <laughs> you motherfuckers. <Jeez. laughs> and um, Terry uh, Sniper. Okay. I was trained by those guys. I started in 2008 was when I started training. Debuted in 2010. I refed mostly for a couple years and mm -hmm. managed now, which they would always give me shit saying, yeah, Ronnie the referee. I thought he was fucking retired. And then I do a ref spot, and he just rolls his eyes at me. You know, but other than that, man, I, I love doing this stuff. That's Despite good. what you hear about me, I love doing this stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so you guys obviously been at it for a while. I've heard, I've I've seen the MTO team, which again we talked about. You you have a lot of fun with the sandwich name, right? Of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not familiar, it's it's you know. Uh, does it stand for made to order made to order yes. yeah so i took a spin off of the nwo just yeah. like everyone else of course because indie wrestling <laughs> but why not <laughs> it's a it's a logo that the fans can relate to so why mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's Your hard enough still... to sell a t-shirt as it is you know put a put a logo on there that someone's familiar with make it your own they actually sell a little bit better so don't knock me for it that's right i, I, I was a little I, I was actually one of the critics when he first started doing it but then when i started seeing his shirt so i was like mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I sell koozies too. They're on sale at live events for five dollars a piece. And it says keeping a kayfabe on the back. <laughs> That's awesome. You, you also sell stuffed bricks. Tell them about that. No, the bricks actually <laughs> sold out. <laughs> Wait, why do you <laughs> So uh, over my fourteen year career of indie wrestling, I've realized that if you're selling merchandise at a table and it has your name on it, there's a fat chance you're gonna sell it. Mm. You sell shit that people want to buy that's stupid, foam bricks, noisemakers, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. hell, rubber duckies. Put a mustache on a rubber duck. It'll I've, sell I've faster it. than an MTO t-shirt every If you look at a Beastman gimmick table, that's what to sell. <laughs> <laughs> Beastman sells rocks. <laughs> what? And signs them. Legit sells rocks. He yeah. sold a brick for $10. I think I was there. Didn't they? Didn't they um, auction off a brick at Fight Society one yeah, time? Was right. it? Was the, yeah, yeah. We made ten dollars off of a red brick. <laughs> <laughs> that you probably what found out back. Exactly. Right. Yeah, because there's a lot of bricks laying around behind that building, I believe. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so your your advice to merchandising is sell stuff that people want to buy. Don't put yourself over. There you go. There you go. That's, a, that's actually really good and in line with the conversation I was just having last night with somebody. Um, <laughs> so you went from that to... Oh, oh, Destin, I don't know as much about your career. I started off... Uh, I'll pull the curtain back a little bit. I started off the beginning of my career under a mask as Eisendrock. And uh, it was kind of... Honestly, it was, there wasn't any masked guys. Uh, good friends with... Uh, Bobby Williams, mm -hmm. referee, 
he was doing the Mantis gimmick at the time. And we kind of like broke in. We didn't necessarily have the same training class, but we broke in together. We we're both smaller guys. So we uh, teamed together and Devil Budokan kind of took us under his wing. And uh, so I wore the mask uh, shortly after the Eisendrock name, which I honestly don't remember how that came about. But it was I, like the German. Is... It was like the German luchador who spoke English. <laughs> so, <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> but uh, I feel who like... was who was the redneck cowboy that just popped into my head in WWE? The redneck cowboy. I don't know. Uh, no, the uh, the Asian cowboy. Oh, uh, Jimmy. Oh, Yang. Jimmy Wang Jimmy Yang. Wang Wang Yang. Yeah. 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 He has a party bus in Cincinnati now. <laughs> Jimmy Wang Yang's party bus. Oh, Eisendrock was even more confusing than that. <laughs> oh, and I still get like to this day like. I still have a handful of people that just call me Eisendruck. They, but uh, <laughs> after that, <laughs> I uh, went with the name Apollyon, which uh, that is friend an, actually that is a name I've heard. Yeah, yeah. And that was uh, I. I got the Apollyon name because that was a character out of the Bible, like the King of Demons. So when I was with Devil Budokan, Mantis, Jake Garrett, uh, that uh, group, it kind of fit in more. And pretty much as soon as I got that name, the stable broke up. So, <laughs> but I kept that gimmick, and then uh, shortly after that, I started teaming with Sean Dahmer with the uh, Straight Jacket Mafia, and that's when I, like I didn't really know anything about like uh, working a match or psychology. Maybe I still don't. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's when I actually kind of like got it. Like mm -hmm. being a tag team, I I still recommend a lot of the like, younger guys coming up in wrestling get involved in a tag team on both sides, good guy, bad guy, he'll baby face. Because it just you you understand psychology a lot when you're seeing that baby face work for that comeback, the hot tag, everything. It just it's a very simplified way of understanding how to build a wrestling match and mm. we we didn't really do a whole lot. We had some fancy moves, but we were over everywhere we went and it, it was like we were more over than we should have been, I guess, because we weren't necessarily the most talented team. But, <laughs> I mean, something we were doing was right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, uh, from that, it, it, tell me a little bit more about uh, MT OSHA. Again, <laughs> obviously a takeoff of MTO. Um, is When I saw you guys last month, was that the first time this MT OSHA thing started? Yeah, yeah. one show. Right? Um, uh, explain kind of the situation with MT OSHA. So the whole thing started off with just being the MTO. That was like my mm -hmm. kind of personal uh, catchphrase, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't know. These goofballs started doing tag team <laughs> stuff with me. So it just kind of became like our uh, our tag team name. Uh, I don't know. We did we did MTO for a little while. Comedy stuff. Off and on throughout. Yeah. Off and on comedy stuff. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know. Do you do you know the story of how Osha, MT OSHA started? Yeah, we were actually uh, at LA Fitness, and <laughs> yes, we go to the gym. We're all good ideas start, right? <laughs> Can't you tell and, uh, I can go to the gym? Go. Ronnie Ronnie goes to the gym. Too. I've been missing a few days lately. That's a lot. But, uh, <laughs> Free pizza at Planet Fitness on Tuesdays. <laughs> it's a trap. That's actually uh, yeah. I I don't remember what got us into the conversation, but we're, we're always discussing. We were doing the seatbelt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we're always discussing just like how. There, that there's a lack of characters. There's a lot, lack of like everybody wants to be the wrestler's wrestler, mm -hmm. have those five star matches. Well, comp Dave com com and <laughs> competitor MMA kind of thing, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. It's almost like to the point where it's starting to overwhelm a uh, your typical indie show because you're getting so much of the same style. And I've always been a character guy, like. I don't know anybody who's ever tuned into wrestling and stopped and be like, "Oh, I got to watch this." He has a good headlock locked in right now. Uh, you you see those mo you stop and watch for those moments. And I'm always thinking of like the casual fans, not the people who are gonna buy those tickets no matter what's going on. So uh, we're we one thing led to another, and we're on that we're, one machine. Like I said, it had uh, like a seatbelt on it. So that you don't pop up out of the chair. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just started clowning Destin. I'm like, man, make sure you got your seatbelt on. Uh, then it just kind of spun off from there, and uh, we take the O of MTO, apply it to OSHA. And there you go. Genius. Genius. There, there was no serious talk about it at first, and it just kind of like, well, that would be a good idea. And like then, every good you know what? it kind of came off as a, as a rivet first. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then it was like, this, this will actually work. Nothing like this is being done or 
I, I don't know if it has been done, but it's it's kind of got its own unique spin off of the right to censor, mm-hmm. and that's that's um, whenever we're showing the video. If you guys are on the video version of this, and you saw like the the flashing yellow lights at, at the beginning of this video, like it is that like kind of right to censor horrible sound, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I I think somebody said like they heard somebody in the crowd saying, "Oh no, <laughs> our entrance music is legit, like two minutes worth of." Hey! Yeah, yeah, like sirens and things like that. The funny thing is, we're we were debating on what to use for theme music for like weeks, and finally, like I actually was the one that came up with that uh, for a theme song. Theme song, because I was saying like, well, everybody has like the, the there's nothing that would fit that gimmick, and I, I was that actually came on my TV one time. I was like, what if someone's theme song was just that the whole way through? Just you had the noise. warning buzz at the beginning, and then just that. And nothing else with that because then you're being annoying and everyone's gonna mm-hmm. hate you <laughs> yes you've definitely set the tone at that point right? <laughs> that's real heel heat not the not the heel heat that people are booing you out just to get you out of the ring because they don't want to see you this mm-hmm. is actually heel heat because they hate you and mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a huge believer that the entrance is just as important if not more important than the match as far as i mean without a doubt we're getting your character over you you have 30 seconds to a minute and a half to really all attention's on you, and you got to make the most of it. And that, that theme song is definitely <laughs> helping us get that heat. So, so I uh, say we're again we're so, showing some footage for this match, and you guys had a uh, a safe zone that you <laughs> set up in this match. There was a lot of like uh, uh, there was a lot of explanation. And usually at an indie show, we're like, oh god, these guys are on the mic way too long, right? But you set up basically the rules of a match to the point where when somebody got disqualified for coming into the safe zone at the end spoiler i was not mad at that being a reasonable thing to end a match right like it just i bought into it um uh, at, at that point you know? I, I was a little worried about that i was worried like are, are they gonna like buy into it that they did though and then, yeah. and i always go into every single match as if nobody in that crowd has ever seen yeah because you got to reintroduce it to somebody and the exactly, first time so no we have what. to do that yeah. going forward as we expand the gimmick too because we have more ideas going forward mm. to expand the safe space and expand yeah. the uh, the promo was key in this match in the beginning because without it and and, and the thing with a promo you got to kind of cut to the chase give the fans what they need to know um whatever you're doing put it over um and make it make sense so what i don't know the promo might have been a minute minute and a half long there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But the concept is, is like, hey, this is our safe space. Mm-hmm. If you cross these cones, you're going to get disqualified. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm just watching the video right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm eager to see what's... I mean, I mean, it's it's different. Nobody else is doing anything like that. Yeah. Um, it it kind of reminds me of... Um, who what, Was it Vader that did the, the, thing, uh, the thing where you pin him and then... He's like, no, 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 count to five instead of three. King Kong Bundy. King Kong Bundy, right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of that. I mean, you're taking an aspect of wrestling and you're just tweaking the rules a little bit, making it your own. You have a lot to play with. Uh, uh, you had Ronnie coming in and, and checking the, like, taking a measuring tape to suplexes at one point. <laughs> we got to work those bugs out <laughs> a little bit. That, yeah, that yeah. we have to. There, there, was, <laughs> there, there was some stuff. Uh, the whole idea was for him to measure us for that vertical suplex. Yeah. Okay, we're good. The height's safe. And yeah. then they do the vertical suplex to us. No, no, it's not safe. Like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we we have ideas along those lines. I, I'm happy with how everything for that being the first time we uh, got to display this whole character, the gimmick. I, I was happy with how everything went out, and oh, definitely a lot more ideas. It's it's not going to go stale anytime soon. I don't oh, think. No. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, well, there's a literally a list of ideas. It's anyone who's ridiculous. familiar with OSHA knows that there's like so many different topics that you can cover, and that's what we plan on doing. Each and every show, we're going to mm-hmm. kind of cover a different mm-hmm. topic of OSHA. Uh, as somebody who, uh, for six or seven years, did um, OSHA-based training videos for the steel <laughs> industry personally, th- this is probably why I'm so into this guy. <laughs> right. And actually, if I have a nephew who just went to safety training and I sent him this video, I'm like, dude, check this out. <laughs> and dude, what, what else could you possibly use to get more heat than OSHA? Nobody yeah. likes OSHA. Yeah, nobody likes OSHA. Nobody <laughs> likes to watch our videos. You should do a training video. There right. you go. Ooh, that's not yeah. a bad idea. My, my biggest worry was, and we discussed this in uh, going into a whole new gimmick like this, is I have the Dustin Vein g- gimmicks. So I have like a gimmick that's not really related to OSHA at all. He has a name, Dan Sandwich, which has nothing to do with OSHA <laughs> at all. And I always joke with him, like he's been Dan Sandwich for 14 years and hasn't had a 
carry a sandwich to the ring in 12. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it, I was worried like, okay, the empty OSHA thing, but the, the members are called Dan sandwich, Destin vain, Ronnie Starks, I guess would fit in. But I, I think we, there's enough of that core fan base that know who we are, where mm-hmm. the new fans can kind of be like, okay, get the history behind us. But that was, that was my only worry, but I, th- I think everything seems to be, Getting over the way it should so far. Uh, good props. Good uh, uh, tickets. Tickets all over the place torn up <laughs> after this. Cones being thrown everywhere. It's mayhem after one of these matches. Uh, so awesome. Uh, and, I, and I'm looking forward to see. Uh, I'll be able, uh, as of this recording. I know it's going to be officially released afterwards. Uh, but I know Black Diamond is this Sunday. If I have my dates right here, yeah, yeah. the fifth, uh, yeah. the fifth of uh, August, and uh, they'll be. Uh, we'll, we will be there filming there, and, and I know those aren't coming out in a timely manner, but uh, definitely if something like this happens, you'll see a couple of clips here and there well, uh, from Black Diamond. STDs are definitely a violation. Yes. <laughs> That's, that does fall under Bloodborne Pathogens. Yeah. <laughs> I did a video on Bloodborne Pathogens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the worst is you can always suppress them, too. Which is oh. <laughs> we, we always, like, BDW, you have a... That, group of guys who are for the most part starting out or Mm -hmm. you have guys who uh well-rounded like crystal russo and so you got those matches that are like they're going to give those fans that wrestling that they want to see when we go in there with stds flexor and everything we like try to do the complete opposite (laughs) because it will give them something fresh and we don't we can go over something like one time and the rest is just we've always been more character and you know like storyline driven i guess um, we enjoy putting together a, 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 a match that gives you not only the, the athleticism of it, you know, people are there obviously to see wrestling, but they also want to see a show. And I think that's what we provide. Awesome. Awesome. So what are you guys watching these days? What's got your attention? Anybody on the Indies, anything in particular you're watching on uh, TV? That's kind of just, uh, either catches your attention or you're drawn, drawn any inspiration from these days. They took away my favorite part of wrestling. I don't get uh, El Rey Network anymore. Oh. <laughs> I am get, uh, get it on that iTunes and the Amazon, man. I am on board with Lucha Underground. It, it is, I'm glad it, it's on Netflix though, because as soon good. as they put the new season on, I'm binge watching the hell out of it. That's it. I'm just saying, worth the three dollars an episode, right? Yeah. I, I, you can definitely get caught up. I just caught up on a couple episodes myself from traveling, but uh, yeah, um, it, it, it is. Well, let me guess, the storytelling, right? Absolutely, yeah. The, the yeah. character development, the storytelling, um, it's hokey as hell, mm-hmm. which is what makes it awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they got people, you know, popping in and out and teleporting and shit like that. <laughs> uh, but I know the, the way that they portray it, uh, the fact that it's only an hour long <laughs> is probably the part that sells it the most. Um, like, yeah, they, they, I've always been a fan of Lucha Libre myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, that's right up my alley. It's fun to watch. Uh, they actually tell a story. The character development's decent. Um, yeah, dude, I'd put Lucha Underground over to the moon. Awesome. What about you? I try to watch uh, as much as I can. Uh, but really, that's about maybe an hour of wrestling a week, two hours a week, <laughs> as far as what's on TV. Yeah, the ways you can fit in, right? Yeah. Uh, there's just so, so much on. Uh, maybe it's a good thing for like the kids watching, but like... You have four hour pay per views on Sunday, three hours of wrestling on Monday, two hours of wrestling on Tuesday. Now there's uh plus NXT yeah. two hundred five. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. just it's it's overwhelming to keep up with, and not like 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 we were talking about. I've always been storyline driven by what I watch. If there's a good match on, like not to take anything away from that, I I'm I love a good wrestling match just as much as anybody else does. But mm-hmm. if I can't know what's behind the match I'm watching, I, I'm not into as much whether it's a five-star match or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if I'm tuning in halfway through Raw and I haven't seen the last two weeks of it, I'm probably not going to be into it as much. It, it seems like they're building that show more and more for the people that are not around for three hours. Yeah. Too, and it's which is kind of weird, but yeah, I, I there's probably a recap for every... 10 minutes of wrestling. <laughs> I uh, did not watch. No, or did I catch maybe the last hour last week? Uh, I don't think. I know. Maybe I didn't. And and I didn't feel like I missed anything. Yeah. The, the best yeah, part I, of Raw this week was when Brock Lesnar said, I don't watch this shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're really just saying what the fans are saying at this right. point in general. Yeah, they're just speaking through Lesnar. And, yeah, and, exactly. Lesnar and <laughs> Lesnar related things. So, uh, yeah. What about you, Ronnie? Uh, NXT, Bring Him Order, New Japan. He makes fun of me for watching too much New Japan. <laughs> uh, I watched one New Japan match. I watched a uh, the Young Bucks. Mm-hmm. I don't know who they were working, but I was a fan of theirs when they were in TNA, and they were working the program with Beer Money and mm-hmm. Gen- uh, mm-hmm. was it? They, they were, were Generation, they were generation Me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who else? The Motor City Machine Guns, and they were tearing it up. That was, I, that was I, a good I crew was super into that. of tag mm-hmm. teams then. So I gave, um, I gave the New Japan a shot. Mm-hmm. I seen about sixty three super kicks, twenty seven <laughs> pile drivers, one of which was on a ring apron, and another like they on have the floor. to do that now. Like they have no choice but to throw those yeah. sixty three because otherwise, yeah. I can't buy into that. Yeah, it's just mm. and it's kind of become their thing too. They're just like you. You don't see a rest. Well, I mean, and I gotta say, I gotta give credit to Young Bucks because, like, um, in in New Japan, like. He sold like a back injury for like three months mm-hmm. after Wrestle Kingdom, like, and you don't see that, yeah, right? He, maybe a leg injury or something, but like, you know, he would like go and they do like one of those like flippy moves, and he's just like, eh, I don't know about this one, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I think in the long tail, like, I think they're doing good things and mixing the flashy with some good uh, psychology a little bit here and there. I mean, but, don't get me wrong; I'm not taking anything away from them. The guys are hell of athletes, mm-hmm. um, but. I don't know, just that Japanese style is just not up my alley. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's crazy. It's a preference for some people, you know? Yeah, there's under a lot of debate after that American show they just did, too. <laughs> the American <laughs> shit ain't up my alley either. So. No, 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 I mean the, the G1 <laughs> the they did G1, in San Francisco. Yeah, there yeah. were like, Jim Ross getting injured over Yeah, Jim Ross, so got, Jim Ross got a broken rib over, over, I seen over that. a match. Yeah. So, like, things like that. That's weird. So, there's that. Um, did I hit everybody? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Oh, there I, we, think so. I think we're covered. <laughs> it's hard. I'm, I'm, I have to traffic cop three people. I know. <laughs> I think we're all in agreement, though. WWE thumbs down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I wish it was across, <laughs> across I, the I board. I wish it was. I, mean, you know, I, I hate talking bad about any wrestling. Thing. You know what's funny? Uh, I haven't watched uh, Raw or SmackDown since we go back from New Orleans. And uh, my buddy Tony drugged me to Extreme Rules. Mm-hmm. I fell asleep the first hour. Really? I slept, <laughs> I slept for two hours the pay per view. Literally, we were standing up top. Yeah, you know, like you know, the cheap area. Yeah, we didn't want to sit in those seats because I'm fat, and those seats kind of <laughs> like aren't big enough for people my size. I'm familiar. So uh, yeah, so I'm like Not literally, I'm like this, and like I fall down, and, like hit my head off the table, <laughs> and my buddy's like, "You're sleeping." I'm like, "Yeah, this is fucking terrible. <laughs> like I can't, I can't handle this." <laughs> and let me piggyback off of that. A lot of the matches themselves aren't terrible. No, uh, it's the storytelling. Mm-hmm. Like we were saying earlier, the things that sell wrestling is the character development and the story. Tell me who Finn Balor is. He smiles a lot. He does <laughs> smile a lot. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's one of the big Tell issues. Tell me who Braun Strowman is. What what did he do before WWE? Why is he this big? What has he done before? Mm-hmm. Tell me anything about Sami Zayn. That's what's, what what's like the any attitude area. You mm-hmm. could have anybody. I mean, you had two cool go out there, Val Venus, and these weren't like main event guys, but you knew who exactly who they were. And you could have jobbers go out there. And uh, you knew exactly who they were. And now you have, I heard there was over 20 guys writing for now, uh, WWE now. Mm-hmm. And it's just like opposed to, what, two or three guys back then. Yeah. I, I can't imagine being a, a, at a table with 19 other guys at least and saying, well, this is what I want to do. What do you want to do? Mm-hmm. And I, I, it's just probably so messy. <laughs> and, and, and with Vince at the head of the table, you <laughs> exactly. know, supervising all that. <laughs> You know, yeah, I, so, I, I couldn't imagine. I, I think there was a interview with um, um, Jimmy Jacobs, and I, I him or one of the other guys. Cause I've, I've heard a lot of ex writers, and just like being there so long before one of your ideas even makes it, yeah. you know, things like that. Uh, so it's 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 an interesting. Um, I, I always blame that kind of back culture for what you're seeing on TV and what yeah. they've kind of become as a company. Yeah. So. And I, I understand too, like that they're too big to have anything less than those 20 mm-hmm. writers or whatever like it would be mm-hmm. such an overwhelming job but they gotta try something to different what yeah, they're doing just, now just ain't working absolutely yet they're worked. making all the money oh they you are. know that's the other argument so they are. but anyways this is about indie wrestling <laughs> what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling in your career so far ah <laughs> somebody want to bite the bullet first without a, again i mean there, i don't have anything like super negative to say about indie wrestling i think there's too much of it uh, in some areas, uh, 
I would like to see more cooperation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I mean, Pittsburgh is a good example. Just you have so many different places, and I'd say half of them, I don't want to say shouldn't be running, but they have some questionable talent. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you took the best of what Pittsburgh had to offer and you just traded them around, you can't go wrong. Like you, ha- you have fresh talent all the time on one show. You have new stories to work with, mm-hmm. and I just think, I, I think that's where the ball is being dropped because you have so many good guys now. I mean, the the new guys coming up now are probably the best batch of new talent we've had, and since I've been here, I mean, I know when I first started out, you had like that very good core group of like. Uh, Devin Devine, Chris Taylor, CJ Sensation, and then it kind of like phased out, and you never really had that group of talent. Like, I mean, with mine, you had like Gory, uh, DJ Z, and mm-hmm. Facade coming. Uh, at, but right now, it just seems like there's so many guys that like uh, they have like the little things to work out still. But like for how long they've been doing it, I mean, they're putting on a hell of a show. And it seems like more of those characters coming out too. Yeah, like definitely. they're they're more diverse. Yeah, it seems too. So. Uh, what about you, uh, Sandwich? Sandwich. The good and the bad. Uh, so anybody who knows me from, I guess, uh, late, uh, well, late 2000s. Like, so I'm guessing uh, 2007-ish, 2006, 2007, the PWX script. <laughs> <laughs> you Are you aware of that? Somewhere? I'm not aware of this. <laughs> what so, is the... Uh, I think the concept came from Justin Idol. Sorry, brother. I'm going to have to bury you for Uh-oh, this. <laughs> oh, one cool cat. Um, so the concept of it was I carried this book around. It said P- uh, PWX script on the front of it. And inside this binder was um, all the matches. Who's the winner? Who's the loser? Uh, promos. What's happening? What's not happening? All this shit. Um, I even remember having a match with Blue Dragon where I won and then I got up and had to act surprised that uh, this wasn't in the script. I was supposed to lose. Um, now, only being in the business for two... I don't think you're in a year yet. Oh, yeah. I think, I'm, I think I'm post-dating myself. This had to have been 2005. So this was before I think I was only in for like one year. Were you even Dan Sandwich yet? I was not Dan Sandwich yet. Plus this is post-Dan Sandwich. Dan Sandwich. <laughs> Um, and Dan Sandwich started in December of 2005. So this is uh, early to mid-2005. I wasn't even in a year yet uh, doing the script gimmick. And um, just kind of being at the point in my career where, like, hey, this is an opportunity for me. It's something. It's a storyline. Roll with it. And, uh, God, I wish I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. It was, so it was just like this kind of super meta thing, huh? There, there was it didn't people- work at all. The, the, I, I would hear stories where, like, there was people that legit had heat with him for doing yeah, that. Yeah, gimmick. dude, I caught a lot of heat for that shit. Uh, because it was, like, completely breaking what what your license plate says. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, and I was just like, I don't know. I, one thing I, I always have said, uh, Dan Sandwich has probably, out of everybody in the area, and I'm not just saying this because... I'm his friend, but uh, he he catches a lot of heat for stuff that, like, the story was either twisted or, like, they don't know any of the facts at all. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's that's your diva wrestling locker room, and stuff gets twisted all the time, and (laughs) it happens. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Did we get you good and your bad? Uh, My good? Um, I guess I'd just, I'd say, like, working Black Diamond shows, man, the fact that they do so many... um, unique things like what mm-hmm. other what other wrestling company on the indies does buried alive matches yeah um, yeah and a very functional one too right yeah and having been able to take part in one myself was fucking awesome <laughs> there's my one f-bomb for the show <laughs> um other matches like uh they you know they gave me the opportunity to do a brown bag on a pole match <laughs> what what each corner has a pole on okay. the top of the pole is a brown bag weapon inside the bag okay you pull it down you can use it <laughs> kind of like the mystery box match from WCW back yeah, in the day. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, I, the the things that Rick Diamond does with Black Diamond for everything from the stage, the lighting. I mean, the guy puts on a hell of a show. You had that all-time eye match. 
the ultimate eye where uh right they, i uh, mean uh <laughs> back in that was in 2000 Six. It was right, right when the uh, the first Ultimate ever X Diamond match. Division Championship mm-hmm. match. Two Rick. towers and a and a line across the top. Belts hanging in the middle, so you got to climb across the line, grab the belt. And he called it an Ultimate I match. I called it that. <laughs> oh, it, was just a, <laughs> it wasn't an Ultimate X. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, because we only have one side. Gotcha. But you had you had, you had guys in there that pulled it off, like uh, Dan, that was Gory, me, Gory, uh, Shima, and Jason Cage. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. What about you? What's your best and worst from indie wrestling? Do I want to get myself in trouble today? Sure. Yeah, the answer is sure. no. We're live on the internet. Have you seen <laughs> the list of people watching? What, like three? Mm. Eleven. Oh, hey. Bro, 11. we're double digits. Hey, eleven people. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, all right. Uh, egos. People have too many egos. Mm-hmm. That is a huge problem. Mm-hmm. If everybody was just cool with each other and nobody like... Especially on indie wrestling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Too many. Uh, that's my only complaint where I'm not going to get called an asshole today. That's fine. Get called an asshole, man. Come that's on, fine. shoot. We're shoot not that head. show. We're not I that hate, show. I <laughs> hate a lot of people on the independent wrestling scene. <laughs> like who? <laughs> <laughs> that's for gold. We'll do that later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, what's your good? What's your, bring it around. What's, what's your good? Uh, what's good? Us. We are, <laughs> we, are, we are very good at what we do. That is an answer I've never gotten before on this show. I want to point <laughs> Ronnie, out. Ronnie, that's why no one likes you. Nobody, I can't remember anybody just straight putting themselves or their team over as the good thing in Wait, indie wrestling. Wait, can we, can we all agree that Ronnie's bad thing was ego and his, his good thing it is ego. his ego? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's perfect. Perfect. So, uh, I quit. Holy crap! <laughs> um, all right. Well, hey, uh, where can people uh, t- where can people find you online? And where can people f- typically find you? Black Diamond, obviously, but uh, you know, not just this weekend as of this recording, which a lot of you guys are going to get afterwards. Uh, but generally, where can they find you online and in person? Uh, online for me, I have a Facebook, Destin Vane, uh, Twitter. I, and I really say, need to start Destin, not. Dustin or anything Destin like that. Destin with D- a D. D-E. I've been, try- I've been and there's trying a- not to say it wrong this entire time. <laughs> there, there's an uh, E at the end of Vane, too. A lot of people spell it V-A-I-N. Mm-hmm. But uh, Twitter handle is Dest- at Destin Vane, which I really should start using more. And then, uh, <laughs> as, as far as uh, where I am right now, it's uh, primarily Black Diamond Wrestling and Fight Society. Uh, I'm looking for a while. I wasn't really able to do much more, but I'm in a spot now where I have that opportunity and availability. So probably within the next uh, few months, I'm going to try and branch out a little bit more, get some opportunities going into next year. Awesome. Dan Sandwich? Uh, I'm on Twitter, at MTO Sandwich. That's Sandwich with one H, in case you don't know how to spell it. (laughs) That H is at the end. Sandwich. (laughs) Um, Yeah, at MTO Sandwich on Twitter. Uh, you can also add my Dan Sandwich page on Facebook. Don't add my shoot page because I will deny you. Uh, I don't <laughs> add any fans on there because uh, I'm keeping it kayfabe. Um, <laughs> you can see me at Black Diamond Wrestling once a month. You can see me at Fight Society once a month where I'm laying the cornerstones to the Fight Society Foundation, laying bricks to asses. Uh, and selling them after the match. And selling, selling them $10. For <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, anybody else that wants to pick up Dan Sandwich on a card, call at your boy. There you go. Ronnie Starks, where are you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Starks Wrestling. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Ronnie Starks. It's just a picture of us three looking <laughs> silly, as usual. Uh, I'm working at Blacktown Wrestling, and I am at Quaker City Wrestling out in Ohio. And you work at Quaker Steak and Lube, right? And Quaker Steak and Lube, yes. Come by Wings mm-hmm. uh, every Wednesday. Is it still every Wednesday? <laughs> it's Wednesday. It's every Wednesday, uh, half wing, half wing night. Yeah. Right. Oh, and if anybody else still buys collar elbow shirts at full price, don't forget to use code MTO at checkout <laughs> for 10% off your collar and elbow order. That's code MTO at checkout for 10% off. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, thank you so much. It was a blast having you guys on here. Um, it's a pretty full chat room as well. Thank you, everybody, for coming out and uh, saying hi in there, including, again, Rick Diamond hanging out, seeing <laughs> what you guys are doing with the belts here, it's, it, it seems. Uh, Carrie, Nicholas, uh, who else is in here? Samantha, 
uh, to some guy named Zoltan uh, and Bradley out there as well. Oh, we wait, show that off a little bit. Uh, show that off a little bit. There's the belts. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much check these guys out and you can ch- again you can check out a little bit of them in action uh, and I think we have a couple other things at least with Dan Sandwich over at IndieWrestling.us in the back catalog with IWC and RWA and who knows where else I think you've popped up in your 14 years holy crap <laughs> I don't know man I worked Code Red Wrestling so I only get booked at as Black Diamond and Fight Society <laughs> <laughs> there's that there's that Blackball. yes uh, so go check them out support these guys support Indie Wrestling support Black Diamond Wrestling and we'll see you guys next time this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.